Today we're going to look at dividing polynomials. Okay, this is something you should have seen before, so it'll be a little bit of review. <laughs> this is something that comes in handy in a calculus co uh, course um, in situations where you'll end up taking an integral, which you don't know what that means right now. Maybe, maybe some of you do. You'll end up taking an integral of a rational expression, polynomial divided by a polynomial, and the easiest way to do it without a calculator is to divide the two polynomials and then take the integral. So that's why we're reviewing this. So we'll look at how to divide using long division and how to divide using synthetic division. Okay. So long division first. If I ask you to divide x squared plus 4x minus 3 by x plus 5, you're going to say, how many times can x plus 5 go into x squared plus 4x minus 3? Your goal throughout the process will be to get rid of, you're going to look at what's underneath here, you want to get rid of the term furthest to the left. So what will I multiply x plus 5 by that will result in having an x squared? That would be an x. And if I multiply x by x plus 5, I get x squared plus 5x. Okay, so my goal was to get an x squared here. I didn't really care what happened here, right? I got a 5x, but that didn't really matter to me. Now, when I do the subtraction, that 5x is going to give me a negative x. Bring down the minus 3. What do I multiply this by to make sure I'm going to get a negative x? Because, again, you always want to get rid of what's furthest to the left. That's going to be a minus 1. So I have negative x minus 5. Subtract this, and we get 2. So our answer then, uh, we have a remainder, right? That's what the 2 is. So what we do with the remainder, we say x minus 1 plus, you do 2 over x plus 5. And that's our answer using long division. You can always check your answer by multiplying this by x plus 5. You should get x squared plus 4x minus 3. Now, if I want to use, do that same problem using synthetic division. So synthetic division can only be used if you're dividing by something that's in the form x minus a. Right, the coefficient on x has to be a 1 and then you have to be subtracting just a number. So in this case, the a that we're subtracting is negative 5. Draw a little box, put a negative 5 in the box. Then you look at the coefficients of this little guy right here. 1, 4, negative 3. And we say 1, 4, negative 3. So that's the setup for synthetic division. And then what happens, this first number just comes down, 1. You multiply this by negative 5, and you put the result underneath the 4. Then you add these, get a negative 1. Multiply this by negative 5, put the result here. Then you add negative 3 plus 5, gives you a 2. And then what's happening here is this last number is your remainder, and these numbers are your coefficients. Um, always starting with just, this will be a constant term, this will be x to the first. If there were more numbers along here, you go constant term, x to the first, x squared, x cubed, yada yada yada. So here, positive 1 is the coefficient of x, constant term is minus 1, plus our remainder of 2 over x plus 5. Right. So synthetic division and long division obviously should get you the same answer. They did in this case. So just two different ways of doing it. Synthetic is usually one that people prefer. The downside is you can only use synthetic if you're dividing by something like this. So if you end up dividing by like x squared plus 2. Right. You're dividing something by x squared plus 2 you would not be able to use synthetic division here because you're not dividing by something that looks like that. Right, so synthetic division, again, most people prefer it, but you can only use it in specific instances. Long division can be used whenever you need it. 
So then the only other curveball to look at is in a situation like this, x cubed minus 4x plus 7. When you do long division, you need to see every term. And what I mean by that is we have an x cubed, an x, and a constant term. So right here, we're not seeing an x squared. So when we set up our division, you have to include the x squared. And if it's not there, then the coefficient is zero, right? This is equivalent to that. So that's the last curveball with division. From here, it's exactly the same thing. What is going to get me an x cubed? If I do x squared and multiply that through, I get x cubed minus 3x squared. Subtract that, I get 3x squared. Bring down the minus 4x. What do I multiply by to get a 3x squared? 3x. So I get 3x squared minus 9x. Do that subtraction, we get 5x. Bring down the plus 7. I would have to multiply by 5 to get a 5x minus 15. Do that subtraction, we get 22. So it's x squared plus 3x plus 5 plus 22 over x minus 3. Victory. And so then just looking at that same situation with synthetic division, <clears throat> right here, it has to be in the form x minus a, so in this case a is 3. That's what goes in the box. And then you still have to account for missing terms when you list the coefficients out. So when I set up my synthetic division, it would be 1x cubed, 0x squared, negative 4x plus 7. Right, then the 1 comes down, 1 times 3 is 3, add, 3 times 3, add, uh, 5 times 3, add, mark, mark, mark. and then again with synthetic at the end, this is your remainder, this will be your constant term, coefficient of x to the first, coefficient of x to the second, so 1x squared plus 3x plus 5 plus 22 over x minus 3. Again, should get the same answer if you do the same problem, right? Just ones with long division, ones with synthetic. So that's all we're doing today. Uh, your homework, the front side will be dividing polynomials. I think there are four problems. And then the back side is some review of stuff earlier in the unit. So that's what you should be doing today after you finish your homework check.